Hello everyone, welcome to Airwave. I fought the law and the law won. This is a, adventure, a free adventure game from Ben Chandler. Link will be in the description to where you can play it for yourself. And here's the description. Elodie Major has been running a little indie radio station called Airwave Radio with her friend Zach for five years now, and they've managed to win a strong following amongst the people of the small town of Wave. Recently, however, they found themselves under pressure from mainstream record labels to play their music and have resisted quite forcefully, but they haven't seen an end to this attempted interference just yet. Okay, let's go. Ooh, it's a little bunny. Here, let me light your way with my green firefly dust. There you go. Oh, the big silence. The romance between groove and melancholy there is sweeter than a deep fried jelly at Lawrence's grill. That was Matterhorn. A live recording cut at the Omita bar earlier this week. And the first time they've ever played the song on stage. And that nearly brings an end to the bevy of beautiful beats and sublimely satisfying sounds that has been the last four hours of newly released independent music. Taking over this throne of broadcasting next and steering you like a musical shepherd towards fields of fine indie fare will be Zack. He has a playlist of assorted classic songs by local bands from the last ten years that should satisfy all. Cheesier than nacho sauce, and chunkier than the salsa on top. If you feel like catching some real life independent music, you can come on down to the Omita Bar tonight from 8 o'clock and catch Audrey and Rasputin playing live for the first time ever in Wave. I will totally be there to meet them. Hopefully demonstrating some of my newest dance moves to the sound of their post-folk dance ballads. You're listening to Airwave Radio, Wave's best and only independent radio station. I've been your hostess of Harmony Elodie, and I'll leave you with this. A track from the up-and-coming Snakeland album. This one is called Stacy Home, and has absolutely nothing to do with either snakes or land. Do enjoy it anyway. And I'll be back on later for the late shift until midnight. How did the show go, L? It went well, I think. We've had some great new music come in this week. Yeah, true. Did you see the lineup for next week? Yep. How good is that going to be? I know. Alright, I better let you head on down to the Omita Bar. I'll take over. See you in a few hours. All right, catch you then. God, this is so cool. So a few things. Of course, the art is incredible, as always. Both just in the detail of the world, but also just in the graphic design. It's just such a weird and fascinating world. And also... There is actually a soundtrack to... I mean, there's actually radio... The radio is actually playing in this game that is about a radio station. That is so cool. And also, it actually has voice acting. Not for everything, but just any voice acting at all surprised me. Because I think that's the first time I've heard voice acting in a Ben Chandler game. Yeah, it is actually. Hm. Okay. Let's go. Wait a minute, what? <laughs> Why is she wearing headphones? Either they're very, very long-range wireless headphones, or they are simply a fashion statement. And if they're a fashion statement, isn't that a very... I don't know the word. Wouldn't that be a hindrance? When you can't really hear anything? At all? Anyway, it's still cool, though. It's quirky, I like it. Okay, can I examine myself? No, I can't. This place used to be a workshop. Uh, the basement we built the station in was full of tools, and this anchor was their logo. When the company we leased this place off bought it as an investment, they never bothered removing the anchor. I think it looks kind of nice, actually. 
Yeah, it's definitely an interesting building. Turn on airwave radio, your independent radio station for the town wave. Well, I'm just listening to the radio. Today is going to be Love is Heaven by Roland McAllister, released on the fantastic label Ida City Records. You know, it offers a fresh approach to modern pop and dance music and whatever. I'm I'm not going to play it anyway because we don't accept bribes Ida City Records and the next hour will tell you why. <laughs> this music is so cool. Oh yeah. I could probably just groove out to the music all day, but I guess I should actually play the game. I sure hope my finger snapping is in sync. I better check the audio and make sure it is in sync or it's gonna sound totally wrong. This music is awesome. Wow. I'm stuck between wanting to keep playing the game and just listening. I'm gonna see if I can get these tracks as standalones, because I want them. Or, Yeah. <laughs> Alright, notice. It's not exactly a billboard sign, but nobody really comes up here other than us anyway. Zack built that fuse box himself. It's perfectly safe, though. Sure. I hope. <laughs> a custom-built fuse box. Yeah, I wouldn't trust that. Antenna tower. That's one of the few things for the station Zack didn't build himself. We're really very lucky to get the funding we do, considering that we play obscure music and have no advertising. Lisa, the lead singer of Canoes Under Shadows, gave us those lanterns when she came to visit us at the station. She made them herself. I think they're beautiful. I agree, they are. That's a... crow. That is a creepy crow. It has red eyes and it looks like it wants to peck out my eyes. This guy's been hanging around here for a while. I'm not sure if he has a nest nearby, but I haven't seen one. Hmm, can you pet him? Boo! <laughs> okay, I'll leave him alone. It's our little mailbox. We really should get a larger one. Those press releases are getting bigger and bigger all the time. Anything in it? I already got the mail today? Okay. Oh, what is that? It's a flower. I had, I had planned such a beautiful garden for this place. That was four years ago, when the station was more of a hobby than anything else. That's the one plant that survived my efforts to give this place a garden, before the station completely took over all my time. My gardening efforts may have failed, but I, uh, but I still can't pick the last flower left. Fair enough. God, this music is so good! Okay, I need to stop. I need to stop or I'm just going to be doing that all day. <laughs> <sighs> bottles. People bring up their old glass bottles sometimes. Zack uses them to build uh, valves in for the station equipment. Wait, valves? Valves? These must have been dropped off by somebody today. Valves for the station equipment. I, I don't know what that is. A valve. With a bottle. What? Huh. Can I grab one? Hey, what an unusual cap this soda bottle has. I've still got my collection somewhere at home. I haven't added a new one to it since I was a girl. To think I can still classify bottle caps by color palette and typeface. Well, I've got a bottle cap. Cool. It's the top from a soda bottle. These might be worth something in the post-apocalyptic future. Hello, Fallout. 
but at the moment it's not really worth anything. Okay, let's listen to the radio again. Or portmanteau from the words pay and Victrola. You know what portmanteau means? It's French. It means suitcase word. You know what a suitcase is? I suppose so. You know what French is? It's a language. <laughs> you can speak with it. You know you know what music is? Well it's definitely not what Ida City Records is trying to sell us. Now please enjoy Jeremy Guelpa by one of those hip modern German bands. I won't even try pronouncing their name. Good, so I'm not the only one that has trouble pronouncing weird names. And by weird, I mean foreign. And of course, foreign names are not weird to the people that those names are not foreign to, but you know what I mean. Nice, chill music. Okay. Wheel. Uh, this is all that's left of Zack's attempt to build a cable car between the tower and the station. If he actually built it, uh, he was walking with a limp for months after that. <laughs> uh, he's a good engineer, but sometimes I question his ability to consider the common logical side of things. Man, I would never, ever, 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 ever step foot on a homemade cable car. Nope. Paper. Also, it sounds like the singer for this song is the same one when I was just doing the radio presentation. The presenter. Sounds like his voice. Normally I don't litter, but that letter was from uh, Ida City Records trying to bribe us into playing their music. Uh, I put it out here to serve as an example for any other corporate slime balls who think they can pay us to play their generic music. Hopefully an animal marks their territory on it. <laughs> okay, I think it's finally time to, learn to leave the first screen. The door to our little station. Okay, let's go. Alright, that is where I am, the radio station. Omita Bar is where I need to go. Um, there's the caravan and the grill. God, this music is so awesome. I have no idea what he's saying. I think that's German. But still, I like it. Omita Bar, here we go. Uh, let me save. God, the art is so good. I'm really amazed by how Ben Chandler manages to get these really smooth, uh, smooth lighting and smoothly shaded things. Like, very subtle shading. With such a limited amount of pixels. I mean, look at this. The glow from this window, you can see not only on the... Oops. You can see it not only on the ground, we can also see it just glinting off of the side of the building. And he only has a scant few pixels to actually do that with, but he manages to do it. Wave is such a quaint town with all the old buildings. I really do love this place. I don't want to go strolling through town, I've got things to do. Hey, Audrey. I'm gonna tell you a story. Tell me, tell me a story. You know, once I went to the store and I bought a cucumber. <laughs> yeah. And I took it home. And at home, I put it on my sandwich. Because I was in the mood for a sandwich with cucumber, I'm sure you will understand that. So, after I had bought it, and put it on my sandwich. I ate it and digested it. <laughs> and the result. I'm sure you all know what the result was. The result was digestive output. <laughs> but you cannot buy music and you cannot digest it because only, only crap will come out. Uh, sure, you'll agree. So. I'll just keep on playing non-crap music 
as I always did before. And nobody will stop me from doing so. Unless you come up to a little shack and tear it down or whatever. I love this guy. He's got such a great voice and that was the best, truly the best story I've ever heard. That should be a children's book. That story about the cucumber. That is a very big instrument for you. That is a... Oh, crap, I forgot the name of it. Um... Is it a cello? I think it's a cello. Rasputin. You look like a dangerous sort. How you doing? That's Rasputin. One half of Audrey and Rasputin. The bigger half. <laughs> that is quite a band. Rasputin and the little girl. Oh my god, I just... I thought he was holding a bottle. I just looked at that. That's not a bottle. That's like... The world's tiniest mandolin? Or something? That's a tiny guitar of some sort. So the big guy has the tiny guitar, and the little girl has the huge instrument. <laughs> uh. Hey, you guys must be Aud Audrey and Rasputin. I'm Elodie from Airwave Radio. I remember you. You interviewed us over the phone about half a year ago. Yeah, that's right. It's good to see you guys in Wave. It's cool to be here. I love traveling around and playing in new towns. Well, from what I can tell, the folks in Wave are pretty big fans of yours, so hopefully we'll get a good turnout tonight. What's with the eye patch? I don't remember you having one before. Oh, the, trom the trombone players from Falling for Forwards and Dine. What? A mistress. Huh? What? what did that say? I was walking past and got hit as Jerry from Dine Mistress went for a tritone glissando. It hurt, but that part won him the, du the duel. It was pretty impressive, too. He barely even paused after hitting him. What a story. I'll be sure to remember that one. Ah, damn it. I can't get it back again. I, I fumbled over trying to read the weird band name. And then I just missed parts. Anyway. Any other stories from the road? Huh, not many that I can tell in front of Audrey. There must be one. Huh, well, once we were drinking Ed in Red Gavin's chore van when Nigel Kotchsaw or whatever decided to try mixing mango juice with Oza. The fumes that Punch put out were so strong that Harry Tentleg sang two octaves higher than usual for the next week. <laughs> two octaves? That's ridiculously high. I can't imagine his voice going anywhere higher than a low rumble. I know. It was pretty potent stuff. Any other stories? Nah, the one with the mango juice and Ozu, or Ow, whatever that is, is probably my best. At least the best one I can talk about in front of Audrey. Oh, come on. It's not like I don't see people in crowd doing that stuff. Yes, but I'm your dad. It's a bit different when the stories are about me. Why aren't you inside? You guys are playing a gig tonight, right? The owner said something about some complications she has to figure out. So we came out here to chill for a bit. I get sick of waiting in bars. It's nice to wait outside. You didn't ask what the problem was? I'm just a simple musician. I haven't got the head for that sort of thing. I play when they tell me to play, and I hope I get paid after. Hope you get paid? Your last album was really, really good. Surely you made enough from that to not worry about money. Oh, it's not like it's you—it's not like it used to be sleeping on floors because we couldn't afford motels. But the album didn't sell that well, and we need to keep playing shows to earn money uh, enough to record another one. Oh, that's a shame. I hope it works out. Well, if we have to go back to sleeping on floors, we will. We'll get another album recorded one way or another. It's not like we don't enjoy playing shows, either. See you later. Yeah, we will do. Make sure you come on down when we start playing. Whenever that will be. 
Well, there's a problem, and this is an adventure game, which means I need to solve it. Nails. They, uh, these must have fallen out of the planks here. I hope nobody has stepped on them. Well, let's do a public service and clean them up. Better not leave these lying here. Someone could step on them. Great. Now I've got nails and a bottle cap. Although I'd like to point out that the nails actually look like screws. But that's just because they're pixel art. So each individual pixel looks like the threads of a screw. But they're meant to be a nail. Drain. I think I should just leave that alone, really. Are you sure? This leads to the stormwater drains of Wave, where Who's the Treasure recorded their debut uh, EP. They've since moved on to recording in the sewers of Ida City. <laughs> they record in the sewers? Oh, okay. That's interesting. It's a strange name for a bar, but it's catchy. That flicker is a bit annoying, though. Why, hello! There is, like, no one here. Man, we've had some good nights over the years with the hands that played this stage, or the bands that played the stage. Remember when Rip, uh, Rip saw Blood Gore played? Oh god, yes. Remember the props? Oh god, yes. <laughs> and the part where they... Yes, Kim, I remember it very clearly. Man, what a show. So, what was the name? Ripsaw Blood Gore? Sounds, um, very metal. <laughs> Sounds very death metal. I only get up on stage if I've been asked to help out at a gig. I just want to sing along to all of the music. Stage. Ba-da-da-dun! Dun dun da da dun. Okay, need to stop. <laughs> stool. That stool and my bottom have gotten to know each other pretty well over the years. Shelf. Where Kim mixes her potions. She is a druidess of the night, mixing potions for the masses. Uh, an elixir apothecary of the present day. An alchemist creating alcohol based gold. It'd be so much sexier if you referred to me as a serving wench. <laughs> I know not to encourage you too much. Oh, I don't need very much encouragement anyway. Beautiful landscape. I know. Your head, funk must have been telling us about. The second song was "Caramelo de Salchichon" by Cosmonaut Gonzalez, which is, I must say, my favorite Mexican space rock band for the moment. A Mexican space rock. But I don't know if you agree. <laughs> if you don't, call in. Oh, I just forgot we don't have a phone. Well then, you'll have to take it. <laughs> I, I can confidently say that is my favorite Mexican space rock song of all time, because it is the only Mexican space rock song I have ever heard. That's Kim. She's pretty much my best friend. Ah, thanks, sweetie. Cocktail menu, remote control. What is that control? The remote control for the bar is stereo. Oh, no, turn it back on. Yeah, I don't want that to be off. God, what person in their right mind would turn off the music in a game that's all about music? It's a menu with a list of drinks. White Gold, 7.30, Mint Twist, Red Sky at Night, Triple Chalk, Tangy Time Warp, and Midnight Swim. For a small charge, we will add an extra measure of gin, vodka, rum, ozer, whatever that is, or tequila to your chosen drink for that added kick. These look interesting. Alright, Jared, who are you? Corporate suit types, never did like them. Oh, is he the problem with the band playing? The corporate suit. Hey, I haven't seen you in here before. My name is Elodie. I help run the local radio station, Airwave Radio. 
charmed, I'm sure. Please excuse me, I'm not in the mood for idle chatter. Oh, okay. Sorry. Maybe I'll catch up with you later tonight, anyway. Hmm. Alright, let's talk to Kim, see what's wrong. Kim, good to see you again. Ellie, it's been a few days since you dropped in. I've missed your smiles. Aw, oh, thanks, Kim. I heard Audrey and Rasputin were playing tonight, and thought I'd better come down to check it out. It'd look pretty bad if we didn't talk about a gig in our hometown on our radio show. <laughs> Always here for the music. It's good to see you, anyway. I would come in and chat more often, but we're so busy doing our radio thing. I know. You seem to spend your whole life at that station, sweetie. Well, gotta follow the dream. And it's what I love doing. Huh. <laughs> Anyone can see that, Ellie. It's pretty quiet in here tonight. Yeah, hopefully things will pick up a bit once Audrey and Rasputin start playing. If they start playing. In any case, it's only early. Things are bound to pick up later on. Audrey and Rasputin might not play. They're right outside. This goon here has some documents saying that apparently they're not allowed to play here or, or something. Ugh. I hate it when people let the politics of music take over from the enjoyment of music itself. He might be bluffing, but he says if they do play, I could lose my license to serve alcohol. But that's a risk I can't take, sweetie. Maybe I can sort him out. Have you ever seen this label guy before? Yeah, he was here a month ago, trying to get us in, uh, trying to get us to book a band that the record label he works for has signed. I was already pretty fully booked with bands, though. Which label? Edda City Records? Of course! Oh, I know them. They tried to get us to play one of their band's singles the other week. Offered to pay us for circulating the track and everything. You didn't accept? We're an independent station, Kim. We might not make much money, but we're certainly not going to take record label bribes to play their awful music. Your integrity is an inspiration, Ellie. Well, I'm at the bar. Can I get a drink? Of course. What are you after? Hmm. I'm going to go for a tangy time warp. Sure, Ellie. You want an extra shot? In it as well? Hmm. How about you add some Ooza or Auza? Because I have no idea what that is. I don't even know if that's a real thing. Because I don't drink. But it sounds exotic. Maybe it's a drug. Right you are. Coming right up. How much, Kim? Elodie, you know I don't charge you for your, for your drinks. I feel bad having drinks without paying. Sweetie, this is my bar and I make bar policies. It's my policy to never charge either local musicians or DJs for drinks, and never to charge pretty girls for their drinks. You fall into both categories, so it's unlikely you're going to have to pay for drinks anytime soon. I still feel bad about it. Then have a drink. That'll make you feel better if nothing else will. <laughs> Also, did she just put the drink in her pocket? I, I could have sworn she put it into her pocket rather than actually drinking it. Don't you get thirsty serving other people all night? Nah, sweetie. I keep a stash of soda under the counter here. I can usually throw one down pretty quick in between customers. Ah. See? And I thought Randy, the keyboard player from the Corner Lady, drank fast. Practice makes perfect, Ellie. You drink soda in a bar? Yep, diet soda too. Can't exactly mix drinks for people if I've had too many myself. True enough. Fair enough, but why diet soda? You see this figure? Yeah, it's fine, Kim. You look great. Yeah, but I want to keep it. I'll never go find Miss Wright if I let myself go. Kim, people would love you no matter how you looked. Perhaps. But every little bit counts, right? Possibly. You know the Troop Boots song about the wrapping paper on presents? Yeah, I know it. I see your point.
You have our station playing in here? What happened to the jukebox? Nobody ever uses it anymore, so it's out the back. People love your radio shows, Ellie. Yeah, but we play underground music. Nobody listens to that in a bar. Your influence is bigger than you think, sweetie. Our regulars would probably riot if we took you and Zack off the radio. Wow, that's a bit unexpected, actually. With a great station like Airwave Radio? No way. Ah, oh, thanks, Kim. For your spiritual well-being, I will tell you a parable now. Oh, tell me, Radio Man. Tell me. Ancient parable. What is this parable? Uh, once there was a woman with a sheep. <laughs> and since <laughs> came a man with a bulldozer. And he told the woman, I shall give you seventy dollars. But the woman said, no, no way. And the man said, what? Uh, what, the, what the fuck? <laughs> and the woman said, go forth and don't. And <clears throat> the man packed up his bulldozer and went away, never to be seen again. And now, some music. That... This guy is the best radio personality ever. Oh my god, he's amazing. I love him. <laughs> An ancient parable for the ages, truly. When we met on Sunday night, the line told me to do things right. Well, this music's it's good, but it's also kind of loud. Uh, let me turn it down. Hold on just a second. Uh, but do 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 ten percent to take that to five. Okay, that's good. See you later, Kim. Well, yeah, we'll do. Hey, Ellie. Yeah. I really missed you, sweetie. This place seems so dead when you're not around. Thanks, Kim. I miss coming in here all the time, like I used to as well. We've had some pretty good times over the years, but I'm pretty busy with the station and all that. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm not complaining. And I'm glad you're here tonight. I just wish it had happened more often, is all. Maybe if we ever find someone else who can help us out at the station, I'll get a bit more free time to come down. I hope so. Anyway, don't let me waste any more of your time, Ellie. Alright, so I've got to get Jared to fuck off. How am I going to do that? Oh, I actually have the cocktail. <laughs> I wonder what I'd do with it. I'd probably die if I drank all this. Maybe I can put the nails in his eyes. He's not getting any of my stuff, that's for sure. Okay, okay, okay. No violence. No killing. Let me see if I can talk to him. Excuse me. Why are you here? Kim said that you threatened to take action to cancel her liquor license if she allowed Audrey and Rasputin to perform tonight. It is simply a matter of business, I assure you. Business? I'm pretty sure that making such threats is completely unsupported by any law I know of. Really? Interesting that you should think so. I'm quite certain it is, in fact, supported by law. Business? What company do you represent? My employer, my employer is Ida City Records, quickly growing to be one of the nation's largest record labels. I've listened to some of the bands you've signed. I've never been very impressed. That may be so. However, the sales speak for themselves, miss. The sales speak of your ridiculously high budget marketing campaigns, you mean. The band you signed last week are terrible. Eyes of a Stranger, weren't they called? You do realize that all of their songs basically sound the same, right? Music lovers everywhere are hailing Eyes of a Stranger as a fresh new approach to modern rock music. Thank you, Mr. Sales Pitchman. Not this music lover. I say they're uninspired and lacking in creativity. Oh, and what's with the Unlimited Love duo? I guess their definition of love is cheesy saxophone solos and 
awkward metaphors for sexual intercourse. Their poetry comes straight from the heart, and their melodies cover the whole spectrum of human emotion, ranging from sadness to love. The Melody Messenger has just awarded them the Melly of the Year TM for the most melodic saxophone solo in a romantic pop song under four minutes. Good for you. Yeah, I bet four minutes is all they'll ever need at any point. How did Wilted Sorrows even get a contract? Their attempt at emotion are less convincing than one of Lawrence's diet meals. Will to Sorrow have combined youthful enthusiasm with a very real sense of teenage sorrow to create music that reflects the way fans of the band feel. Their music is their catharsis, and young listeners everywhere share in this pain and frustration with them. Oh yeah, I was feeling pretty frustrated after hearing just the first three tracks. Have you even listened to... Oh my god, are you serious? S cool girls? Wow. It's hip. Their music is utter trash, and the TV series they star in is even worse. Schoolgirls <laughs> have managed what few other musical groups have managed, success in both the music and the television industry. Not only did their debut album see five charting singles, their soap opera, Back to School, <laughs> has captured the hearts of female fans everywhere. Seeing them deal with the real dramas that girls everywhere experience is a true inspiration for their fans. And coming soon, a reality show where the girls each adopt an actual schoolgirl for three months, and have to tour whilst being responsible guardians. That's about as far away from reality as television has ever been. Do you honestly think Nuts... <laughs> what? Nutsack Slim is a good musician? <laughs> what the hell kind of a name is Nutsack Slim? He takes all of the good points of both rap and romance and completely ignores them, leaving tuneless, valueless smut. Uh, this music is actually still slightly too loud. Hold on. Three, four, three. There we go. Nutsack Slim's hit single, My Nutsack Fantasy... <laughs> Off the record, Spill Ya Nuts has pushed him into the forefront of the country's hip-hop scene. Spill Ya Nuts. His stage show has been described as sensationalist and provocative, proving that he is just as intense on stage as he is in the studio. Really, I'd have used the word perverted, perhaps along with desperate, for, and attention. Nuts Hack Slim. Sounds like... The best musician that has ever been. And ever will be. Okay, so back to the bar. What proof do you have, then? Here, a copy of a motion passed by the mayor of Wave herself. This was given to me by my employer before I came down here from Ida City. What is this crap? Any artists without memberships to the Wave Board of Performing Arts are expressly forbidden to perform in the mu municipality of Wave until such time as they acquire a membership. Failure to comply will result in both venue and artists being punished in accordance with Wave local law. Lady Ophelia, Mayor of Wave. Okay, so the artists need memberships. Well, that's bullshit. Lady Ophelia passed something like this? I find that hard to believe. What you believe is irrelevant. This was the document I was given. I'll be back. And when I return, I'll be figuring a way to get you out of here, I hope you realize. Idle threats are unnecessary, miss. For you. Will not be by Snake Land, but by Shake Land. Oh. Interesting coincidence, you might say. But that's not coincidence. The former melodica player of Snake Land left the band. Musical differences, I guess and formed his own supergroup. Now I'll give you Shake Land with Boiling Heat. Cool. Oh, and is that a bottle cap? Yes it is, I will take that for my collection. Huh, and now I'm noticing interesting bottle cap designs everywhere. I would have loved this one as a kid. God, this music is awesome. I just want to rock out to it, but I can't do that and play the game at the same time. Oh, 
Okay, so I kind of can rock out to it. Um, well, I guess I should go have a talk with the Lady Ophelia. Alright, let's go. Gah, I can't believe I chickened out again. It shouldn't be this hard to tell her, really. I can't keep putting this off forever. She obviously likes me. Totally obviously. Okay, so it says the musicians themselves need a license, right? With, uh, yeah, any artists without membership to the Wave Board of Performing Arts are expressly forbidden. Okay, so the artists themselves need the license. So let me talk to Rasputin. No way is this legitimate. I've never even heard of the Wave Board of Performing Arts. Let me see if I can talk to him first. Hey, Rasputin. Hey, Elodie. What's up? Okay. So, let's go talk to Ophelia. Wherever she is. Alright, so, well, I guess she's either at the caravan or the grill. Um, let's try the caravan. What the hell? Damon. Hey, dude. Um, you are not the person I'm looking for. I'll come back to you later. Looks like he's having a good time. I'll, I'll leave him to it. Grill. Are you Ophelia? Yes, you are. Uh... Why does it look like she's crying. It's Lady Ophelia, the Mayor of Wave. She looks kind of out of it, like every member of the Green Ginger Band by the time they've played four songs on stage. Yeah, what the hell's wrong with her? Did someone drug her and get her to sign that thing? Hmm. Tower. Man, I really like the art style in this, and in all of his games, but just talking about this one specifically, it's, there's such weird geometry like this. I mean, this doesn't make any real physical sense. Like, what is this? I, I don't even know what that is. It doesn't really make any sense, but it's interesting and it's quirky and I like it. And same with like the characters, for example. They all seem to have weirdly, uh, weirdly colored eyes, almost like they're aliens, but just between the weird geometry and the, you know, slightly weird characters and all of that, it lends a very strange, but interesting kind of twist to it. Everything's fairly realistic looking. It's not cartoony, but at the same time, it's twist enough to be really interesting. So what is this? This thing is a pretty well-known landmark here. It's been around for as long as I can remember. So is it a piece of art? I have no reason to climb up the tower at all. Okay, what is wrong with you? Excuse me, Lady Ophelia? Hello, Miss Mayor? Nope, she's not responding. I wonder what's up with her. What the hell is wrong with her? Does she want a drink? <laughs> I don't think drinking that would help her wake up somehow. Yeah, um... I don't really have anything to give her. What does she need? Coffee or something? Uh, let's see what's here. There's a lot of stuff here. Okay, let's just start with the beginning. Umbrella. Well, you might get fat eating here, but at least you won't get rained on or sunburnt. <laughs> or spied on by the Space Eye if the song's Admiral, Admiral Yu rights are actually based on fact. Sauce. This appears to be lard-flavored sauce. Ew! How utterly disgusting. Okay, I've never actually had lard before, but does lard even have a flavor? Isn't lard just fat? And fat doesn't really have flavor. I mean, it's like vegetable oil. Vegetable oil is basically pure fat and it has almost no flavor whatsoever. Does lard have flavor? 
I don't want to touch that sauce. I'd probably get fatter just by holding it in my hands. Radio. Lawrence keeps the radio playing so customers have something to listen to while they eat. Let me guess, I can turn it off. Yep, but hell no. Turn it back on. Samples. Looks like Lawrence has made some samples for people to try. I don't want to take one of these without asking first. Fair enough. Baskets. One of Lawrence's fast food baskets has fallen down. I hope he's not planning to put food in that after it gets picked up again. I wonder who left this down here. Lawrence dishes out fried food in these. You get chicken in a basket and enough oil to stop every squeaking door and gate in a five mile radius. <laughs> Sounds disgusting. This gets Lawrence to show up when he's not around. Ooh, well, I guess I can press that. Ugh, it takes a special interpretation of the word food to apply the term to the stuff in there. Much in the same way that it takes a special interpretation of music to apply to the stuff YYTY makes. What the hell is YYTY? A pair of tongs. The coating of fat on them will probably stop them from going rusty for at least 70 years. Even the glue-sniffing bag boys didn't manage to hold their band together that long. No, you're telling me the glue-sniffing bag boys couldn't hold their group together? Let me guess. It was drugs? Yeah, it was drugs. I don't want to steal Lawrence's tongs, mainly because they're covered in cooking vat. The object of Lawrence's worship. It's basically a religious icon to him. I don't want to fry anything, and even if I did, there's no way I'd want to fry it that much. That thing does to food what Ford... No, Alan, does to drum kits. <laughs> what? <laughs> and that symbol on the side is a little worrying. What the hell? Is that where he's getting his oil? It's connected to the tower, almost, it looks like. I am not moving the barrel. The symbol on it means flammable, and I don't like being set on fire. Fair enough. Unlike Simon Space and the dental plans when they go on stage. <laughs> Hopefully that was on purpose and not an accident. Okay, let's ring this bell. I wonder where Lawrence could be. Oh, hi. Oh, hey, Elodie. I was just giving the friar a bit of a tune-up. Gotta keep her in good working order. Amen. It's Lawrence. I doubt there's anyone more obsessed with frying things in, in the entire universe. He is the Dean of Deep Frying. Hey, Lawrence. What's cooking? Welcome to the home of the finest fry f fried food this side of the planet. You must be hungry after all that work you've been doing at the radio station. Can I help you with anything today? What's up with Lady Ophelia? Ah, uh, she went for the triple fried battered meatloaf. The fat kinda reacts with the brain, bless it, and causes a temporary shutdown. <laughs> oh. Fat coma, I call it. It'll pass in a few days, and she'll be back to... to how the good lord made her. That settles it, I'm never eating deep fried food again. First the thing with the bassist of Crayon and his deep fried foot. Now fat comes that last, uh, fat comas that last a few days. Ugh. Come now, miss. Fried food is a gift from heaven above. Hallelujah, I say. It'll take more than divinity to convince me of the benefits. Hmm. What's that big tank for? It used to be an old military fuel store. A big old bomb waiting to happen, should the devil see fit. Of course, that was years ago. These days, it's the stockpile for my cooking fat. A treasury of lard on high, like ambrosia, that you can crisp batter in. Ew. When she's full, there's enough fat in there to last me a week. Amen. That only lasts you a week? Holy shit. It sounds like the sort of thing Big Tommy and the Friar Boys would write a song about. Doesn't the fuel residue affect your food? Nope. Any of that flammable stuff burns off when she gets to my fryer. Thank the good lord. 
You can often see small fireballs of stale petroleum wafting off as I whip up another batch of fried cheese and potato balls. And that's the miracle of frying, that is. I think the FDA would have something to say about your setup, but never mind. That whole tank only lasts a week? It's exactly what I was thinking, Elodie. Yep, see, I figured out how to get each and everything I fry totally saturated in fat. The good lord himself struck me with a vision of how I could imbue savory treats with as much fatty goodness as possible. She may hold 120,000 liters of fat in her, but with my divine frying method, the fat keeps rolling out on plates. Ugh. Do you get many musicians coming here? Yeah, sometimes after a gig, the lads from Tantric Wholesale will come down for a greasy treat. God bless them. They're cool guys. I saw them play a few months ago. Yeah, and they always go for the really greasy stuff. They ain't fried food rookies. I also once got Fido from Flaming Pig to sign a napkin for me. Of course, that fell in the fryer one day and went on to be the filling in someone's fat sandwich delight. Ew. Which spontaneously combusted while they were eating it. <laughs> okay. It was probably what he would have wanted anyway. Things always seem to catch on fire around him. Do I really have to wait a few days to talk to the mayor? Yep, once the fat congeals, it takes quite a while for the body to process it. That's just how the Lord designed us. Of course, you can thin it out with the right fumes and then apply a note of the correct resonant frequency to shift it to the intestines. What? But there isn't a pill or anything for it. Fumes and resonant frequencies? Yeah, basically you make it runny with some strong fumes and then you get a sound going that makes the fat wobble and drop. Personally, I prefer to let God's work run its course, and I don't mind having her delightful ladyship standing comatose around here either. The hell is going on in this song? It sounds like someone's being killed. You have a thing for Lady Ophelia? She's a lady wi willing to exceed the recommended daily fat intake by more than 10 times. <laughs> That's a lady after my own heart, that is. Why, I could dream about her oily complexion all day. Amen. Do you sell any healthy food? This all seems to be greasy meat and starch. Sure do. We're modern thinkers. Moving with the times. Thank you all for listening. And tune in again on Airwave Radio, the only station in town that is worth listening to. Don't let the big ones catch you. Stay vigilant. And do whatever the old people tell you. Okay, I skipped through that dialogue because I wanted to hear the presenter. Something about healthy food. Uh, what's wrong with fruit salad? It's unnatural. Unholy. It's a culinary abomination. You get salad, right? That's healthy. Then you get fruit, also healthy. You can't combine two healthy things together. There's no balance, no contrast. It's a yin and yang thing. You're saying fruit salad is like having a whole album of your guitar solos? Exactly. It'd be like deep frying beef jerky or deep frying chewing tobacco. Actually, I wonder. Oh God. Okay, so I need strong fumes and a resonant frequency? What? I'll see you around. Come back whenever you feel like the miracles of fry of feel like the miracle of fried food again. Wait, should that say when you feel like trying the miracles of fried food again? I think it was supposed to say that. Okay, strong fumes. Um what about the cocktail? Here, have a whiff of this. Ooh. Hey, that seems to have done something. You're still only halfway. She's conscious. She's, she's conscious, but the fat will still need shaking loose before you can talk to her. Hmm. Can I, like, change the radio to something? 
No. Alright, let's explore for a bit. Okay, there's one place I have not been. The caravan. Let's go talk to the crazy person. Sup, Damon? You have an infinity symbol apparently tattooed on your chest. That's cool. Ooh, radio. Looks like Damon has built his own radio. What if I gather up a bunch of radios and put them all next to her? No, I don't, I don't want to turn it off. Hmm. What is all of this stuff? Well, let me examine it all before I talk to him. Damon's Caravan. It reminds me of the Caravan D. Tilo recorded... Uh, what? Wait just a century in. What? It reminds me of the Caravan D. Tilo recorded Wait Just a Century in. Okay, I read that wrong. He has a bag of instruments. Damon keeps some of his homemade instruments in his golf bag. Most of them are one of a kind. I bet they are. Note. One of Damon's many papers on abstract musical ideas. You have to be an accomplished musician and mathematician to appreciate most of them. Let F equal frequency. Let U equal, wait, U, equal unvisited range. Let C equal flux equilibrium within the constraints of the harmonic chamber. As F approaches the established limit, observe the reduction in stability of C. One deduces that there is a reversal and increase in C as we approach U according to the principles of... Okay. I don't have any idea what it means, but I bet Damon could explain it in a manner that makes even less sense than this. I think he's going to be the one to help me with the resonant frequency. Contraption. It's a trumpet attached to a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> it's the sort of thing I'd expect to see a fourth wave steampunk ska core band using. Ever heard the word payola? It's a nice word, huh? It's a portmanteau. Or portmanteau. From the word pay. And Victrola. You know what portmanteau means? It's French. It means suitcase word. Oh, okay, so this is. Now it's looping. This is the very beginning. Okay. You know what French is? It's pink. I found that lying around one day, so I hooked it up you know to be my outside light, man. But it's pink. Well, it's definitely not what. Hey, it looks good. I'm not turning off this light. Damon obviously wants it on. Okay, what is he holding? A picture of something and a... something of something? Let's talk to him. Yeah, it's Damon. He's like a mad scientist, except he's also a cheerful goth and audiophile. In other words, he's basically one of a kind. Hey, Damon. How's the inventing going? Oh, hey, man. Things are going good. Working on some interesting stuff right now, you know? How's the radio station going? It's going well. We're pretty much always busy now. It's really taken off in the last year. Cool, cool. You can do me a favor and play a bit more metal on there, could you? <laughs> you never change, Damon. Okay, yeah, he's gonna be the man to ask about resonant frequencies. Why do you like listening to metal? It's the only music I can find with enough polyrhythms to keep me interested. I like to be challenged by time signatures or else I get bored, man. You listen to music for the mathematical complexity of it? Yeah, it's like, if you're going to do something, you might as well use your brain, right? Anyway, I try listening to other, to other stuff, but unless I'm trying to figure out the numbers the whole time, I get bored, you know? Did you know Insect Incest have a song written in one... The whole song only goes for one bar. Hey, that sounds pretty swell. I'll have to check that out. Okay, I missed that. That was a ridiculous time signature. It's like 1,000 and something. And then... Over something else. Yeah. Anyway, I actually know exactly what he means, because most of what I listen to is progressive metal. So when it comes to 
Liking music that's really complex, I know exactly what he's talking about. Um, what's with the jugs? I'm collecting resources for my lost small project before I start working on my magnum opus. I need to gather enough water to make a 10-ton lump of ice that will be hollowed out and turned and tuned to be the world's largest wind instrument. <laughs> okay. The Flutberg, I have called it, and it will have an 18-octave range, tunable by adjusting water levels. You can't just use tap water. I don't want any impurities at all in the water, but I'm worried distilling it will affect the tone, so I settled on rainwater. Now I just need to wait for it to rain. Okay, you have fun with that. Your magnum opus? Yeah, right, I'm looking at exploring imaginary musical theory. How is that supposed to work? Well, it's basically moving past the constraints of the established musical systems uh, system into a more flexible format. I plan to start with impossible notes. From there, I plan to move on to quantum scale theory. And then I hope to finish with non-linear scales. Have you any music that uses any of these things? Nope. At the moment, it's all entirely impossible, man. I'm gonna tell you but it's just like quantum physics for music theory, really. Impossible notes? Yeah, see, I'm looking between the acceptable notes to see what lies hidden between. I hope to start by writing music uh, using only the non-notes E-sharp and C-flat, and then see where I go from there. I thought Ignition 12 had an album in E-sharp. No, they just didn't tune their instruments properly before they recorded it. <laughs> Quantum scale theory? Oops, I chose the wrong one. Non-linear scales? Yeah, scales in music only exist along a single axis. You can go up the scale and down it, but you can't veer off it. I want to change that, expanding from the sharps and flats into their lateral counterparts, the blunts and rounds. <laughs> what will it actually sound like? I have no idea. I doubt the human brain could even perceive such tones. It sounds like that double album by Tethered Yellow from the 60s. Quantum scale theory? It's where you expand upon a note, jumping simply from octave to octave to a whole new key. To prove it, I want to try writing and composing an entire opera piece in the key of O minor. Wasn't O minor a song by Goats of Swoon? Oh, damn it, I skipped it. What's with the pink light? Pink is a calming color, you know? Helps my brain relax and process data without getting affected by impulsive, irrational, subjective notions. And not because Evo Crust only ever play their gigs in pink light? Yeah, well, okay, that too. What do you know about resonant frequencies? Sure do. If I'm near an object, I can actually detect its resonant frequency myself, dude. It's just seeing where the material starts picking up the sound waves, basically. You know how Gerald Feathers gets their, that enormous guitar tone? Yeah, I've wondered about that a bit. It's because his guitar body has a resonant frequency that kicks in at C-sharp minor, and he only ever write, writes songs in C-sharp minor. If you played a song in a different key, the guitar body wouldn't resonate like it does, man. Okay. So could you come with me? If you can detect the resonant frequency of something, then... Can you come with me? Hmm. What does this do again? That's weird that that one option keeps popping up. Maybe it's a hint? Can I go inside of his home? <laughs> Don't need to go inside? Okay. Um, I think that's it for here. Alright, let me go talk to... Uh, what's his name? Jack? The person manning the radio right now? Oh, Zack. Okay, I was close. I was one letter off. Close enough. Zack, Jack. I have no idea what this is, but it's extremely cool. Dianara. I don't know what that is. 
poster. I've got a pretty good collection of posters like this stored away. This one will get added to the collection once I find another I like enough to replace it. Coming soon, the new Cosmonaut Gonzalez album, Yesterday's, Yesterday's Future in Modern Day Sound. Featuring the hit singles, Caramello Does Something Something, uh, the definitive Mexican space rock album of the year. I'm excited about this one. There hasn't been a good Mexican space rock album since Photon Banditos released Senorita 5000. <laughs> Senorita 5000. No matter what they say, I still think sometimes people go too far with their creativity. What do you mean? Rubber Potato. The, tw the 12 part concept compilation between Jim Jim James and Dr. Money is coming this fall. Critics are calling it the most exciting polka project of the decade. Catch them on tour from October 7th. No matter how excited the critics get, I still have my reservations about this one. This is actually two plants intertwined. I named one of them Carlson and the other one Peters. No, Carlson and Peters are fine as they are. Here are some of my records. There's some real treasures in here, and some real trash as well. Let's see. What can I choose? Ross Brown and the Shopping Carts, Aisle 5, True Love. Oh yeah, this one is still a guilty pleasure for me. I doubt I'll ever get sick of this. Did I, like, pick it up? No? Hmm. The first record player I ever bought, and it still and it still works. It's also pretty much the only piece of equi equipment in here, equipment in here that Zack didn't build himself. I don't want to interfere with Zack's radio show. What the heck is this thing? I guess he built it. It looks like it's about to fall apart. Model airplane. Zack and I hung that up there the first day we came down here. Wow, that was like five years ago. How the time flies. I remember when this used to work. Since it stopped, we've never really had the time to worry about things like the time. The station keeps us both pretty busy. Zack tells me these are important. I stopped understanding as soon as he started explaining why. Zack has written me a friendly little reminder note. Remember, no bumping this when the valves are hot. We only have two spares left, so let's try to make them last. Oh, Zack, always worry about me breaking things. You built all of this yourself, so it's not like we need to find someone else if we need to make repairs. It's a... thing. Zack knows what all this stuff does. I'm not really sure, except I know it has to be on all the time during a show. Touching the stuff while Zack is broadcasting is a bad idea. These are kind of old technology, but Zack's, Zack builds them himself, like everything else here. We're not advanced, but at least we're self-sufficient. Also, I kind of like the way they glow when the gear is running. The trash can. A good place for some of the generic music the big labels send us. Another bottle cap. I would have I would have traded my Diet Cronenberg cap for this one. It's a Dianara, Zach's pet jellyfish. Oh no, it's not a Dianara, it's Dianara. He named his jellyfish? Hey Dianara, how's things? Gloop. Good to hear it. Gloop indeed. Keep on gloopin'. I've spent so many hours sitting on that thing. One day we really should look at buying something more comfortable. Okay, Zack, what's up? Zack's manning the airwaves, spreading musical goodness throughout the land. No, I don't want to interrupt him during his show. Let's see. Oh, there's more things. Even my dad likes this album. Probably more than I do, actually. Now, is there anything else in here? 
What am I gonna do with all these bottle caps? Hmm. All right, I can't think of anything to do there. Boo. I hope you all got that beautiful landscape in your head. Funk must have been telling us about. The second song was. Okay. Um. Cosmonaut Gonzalez, which is. I must say, my favorite Mexican space rock band for the moment. But I don't know if you agree. If you can, I get some food. If I give him that, he'll probably fry it. <laughs> I bet he would. Okay, resonant frequency. I just need to turn off the radio. No sense in folding that up, it's fine where it is. Indeed it is, I don't even know why I tried to use it. It seems like I should talk to Damon, but he it doesn't seem like he wants to come with me. Oh, Damon! Wait, what did I just click? Apparently they finally managed to read each other's thoughts and they found out what they really thought of each other. Sad day for Psy, Metal Man. What? Oh, God, ah, I just skipped it again, damn it. Hey, Damon. Hmm. Oh, wait a minute, there's some stuff here. Looks like Damon has hooked his light up to a car battery. Jan Yan hooks his harmonica up to a car battery, apparently, so it really tingles when he puts it up to his mouth. <laughs> I think that would more than tingle. Hey, Damon, can I borrow your pliers? Sure thing, dude. Thanks, Damon. Those things are heavy, and if I take that, Damon's light will stop working. Indeed. Okay, what am I going to do with pliers? These pliers are very useful. I really should get my own pair instead of having to borrow pliers all the time. The heck am I going to do with these pliers? I don't think Damon wants me to add, to the, uh, add that to his collection of instruments. Yeah. I'm just kind of using it on random stuff. What should I do with it? I mean, can I, like, muck around in the radio? No? Hmm. Let's go back to the bar. Anything new to say, Rasputin? Nope. Hey, Kim, I'm back. Hey, Ellie, what's up? I think I've used all these before, right? Even this one? Would you like a drink? He's not getting any of my stuff, that's for sure. Excuse me. Hmm. Not exactly sure what to do. Obviously need to do the resonant frequency thing. But how? Oh, wait a minute. I haven't talked to Audrey yet, have I? Hey, Rasputin. Oh, no, I, I can't talk to her. Use pliers on drain. Nope. The hell am I going to do with pliers? I don't know. I'll be back when I find something. Could you figure out the resonant frequency of this fat? Sure, but you'll have to help me out while my hands are full. I'll hum my way through a chromatic scale. You let me know when it starts to vibrate in your hand. Okay, sounds easy enough. Oh, I skipped it. Oh no, sorry, that wasn't it. Never mind, we'll have another try. 
Uh, there we go. That's it. That's the note. Ah, uh, well, the resonant frequency is F sharp. Great. Thanks for the help, Damon. Okay. So, I've done a couple things. Um, here's what I did. Here's what you've missed. It's not much. Uh, back at the radio station, at this wheel, there was a cable that I needed to use the pliers on to get this cable. And then, back at the grill, now that uh, Lawrence is here, I was able to take one of these sample bottles, or samples, no, they're not bottles, the sample of fat, and that's what I just had uh, Damon get the resonant frequency of. So, now I know that it's F sharp, but now what do I do? Like, do I just sing the note or something? Now I need something that can make F sharp. No, that just turns it off. Well, I still have this stupid fat on a stick. <laughs> what do I do with it? Hmm. Alright, I'll be back when I find out more. Hey, Damon. Are any of these tuned to F sharp? Yeah, the horn with the kink in the middle there, man. Wanna borrow it? Yeah, that'd be handy. Go ahead, dude. Thanks, Damon. Okay, well now I know what to do. Cool. Okay, let's uh, go blow the horn. The resonant frequency. Come on. Wake up, Ophelia. Bingo, bingo! Oh, goodness me, what a strange dream. Are you alright, Lady Ophelia? You got caught in a little coma there. You were pretty hard to wake up. Yes, I think I'm alright now. Thanks, Elodie. Okay, please tell me about this note. Excuse me, Lady Ophelia, but does this look familiar to you? What's this? Let me have a look. Hmm, this is entirely inaccurate. This document has been altered to fit someone's agenda. May I ask where you got this from? A representative of Ida City Records gave it to me. He's trying to use this to prevent a band from performing at the Omita Bar tonight. It's, uh, I see. Uh, do be so kind to inform him that this document will most likely put his employers in a lot of trouble. Also, do tell him that if he doesn't leave the Omita Bar immediately, I will request local authorities to arrest him. This document alone isn't really enough to l lay charges against him, but I'm sure we can find a blackmail charge as well, or something of the sort. Thank you, Lady Ophelia. I will go and talk to him now. No, thank you, Elodie. This is a very serious matter you have brought to my attention. I will have my lawyers looking into it as soon as I return to my office. Good. Let's kick that prick out. Modern German bands, I won't even try. I spoke to Lady Ophelia about that document. Did you now? Oh, damn. I skipped it. I was unaware that any alterations had been made at all to the document. Of course, he's denying it. Well, Lady Ophelia is very interested in who did alter it, and I believe she plans to find out. She also said that if you fail to leave this premise, this premises, these premises immediately, she will have you arrested and charged. I see. Very well, then. Thank you for informing me. My pleasure. Thanks for that, sweetie. I knew his document wasn't legitimate. There's no way Lady Ophelia would support anything like that. I'm just glad you got him out of my bar for me. I really appreciate it, Ellie. Do you want me to go and tell Audrey and Rasputin they can come in and set up their stuff now? That'd be great. Thanks, sweetie. Hey, Ellie. Yeah? What's up? Ooh, is she gonna tell me? If you're, uh... 
If you're not doing anything later, maybe we can get together and do something? Aww. He's so cute. I mean, you're a really great friend, but we never really hang out other than for work. And, well, maybe we could be more than just, you know, friends? I really like you, Ellie. Oh, well, I... I'm pretty busy with the station and stuff, you know? I mean, you're awesome, Kim. But I have all this stuff to do. Oh, come on! Fuck the stuff to do! It's okay, sweetie, I understand. It was worth a shot, I guess. It's not that I don't want to hang out with you, Kim. Just not in that way. Yeah, I get it. Never mind, Ellie. It's fine, really. Kim, you're amazing. I'm sure you'll find someone soon. I'll d I doubt I'll ever I will ever like them as much as I like you. Anyway, I'm wasting your time. Go out there and conquer those airwaves for me, Ellie. I'll be here listening to you. Thanks, Kim. See you soon. Aww. Damn it. I wanted them to be together. Did, did she just walk off screen? Oh. She's even sweet when rejecting my advances. I really like that girl. Don't know if I'm ever going to be able to change that. I hope this doesn't make things awkward between us. I mean, I really like her, and it's not as if I didn't know how she felt about me. It's just that I'm not... Uh, I don't think I can feel that way about her. I guess we'll just have to wait and see, and hope it's not weird to be around each other now. Okay, Rasputin, come on in. What a jerk. He was a horrible man. Now what are we going to do? What happened? Some guy walked out of the bar, came up to us, stole my tambourine, and broke a string on Audrey's bass. Seriously? We'll never be able to play like this. Where are we going to find a replacement string and tambourine at such short notice? Ugh, that slimy piece of trash. I'll see if I can find you the things you need. Be quick, we're meant to be sound checking soon. What a fucking dick. Okay, well, I know what to do for this string, and I guess this is not a cello. It said bass string, so I guess it's a stand up bass. Alright, here you go. This should make a. Well, frankly, a terrible replacement for your string, but it's better than nothing. Could you restring your bass with this? Yeah, but it's covered in dirt. Uh, it'd have terrible tone unless you boiled it. Boiled it? Yeah, it gets rid of the dirt on strings and brings their tone back. Oh, I didn't know that. I'll see what I can do. Okay, so I need to boil the string and he needs a tambourine. How... Where am I going to get a tambourine? And how am I going to boil this? I mean, I could deep fry it, but... <laughs> then it'd be covered in oil. Get rid of dirt and replace it with grease? Uh... Well, let's give it a shot. Can't hurt to try. Do you know any songs about lard, Elodie? Uh, not off the top of my head. Why is that? I just thought it would be nice to have a theme tune for customers to listen to while they eat, is all. Yeah, listening to music about fat while they consume it is a great idea. Alright, let me see if I can deep fry the cable. Lawrence, could I, uh, get you to deep fry this cable for me? Sure, I'll deep fry anything, and the good lord knows it. <laughs> okay, he was more accepting of that than I thought. Dude, don't use your hand! Jesus, use a utensil, you're gonna deep fry your fingers. There, all fried up. Okay. Her hands are gonna be very slippery on the strings.
Here, I, uh, boiled the cable. Huh, it's not perfect, but it should be good enough to play the show with. Thanks. Cool. Now I just need a tambourine. Maybe... Maybe Damon will have one in his bag of instruments. After all, I did get the saxophone or whatever that was. What was it that I picked up? Oh, horn. I already borrowed the horn from here. Can I give it back? Nope. Hmm. Hey, Damon. Oh, hey, man. What's going on? Do you have a tambourine? Nah, man. Sorry. I've been kind of going through a woodwind and brass phase, you know? With percussion, I found that, uh... I found that theories behind that always end up in basic mathematics. Until I can figure out a way to really extend percussion beyond simple ratios, the subject holds no potential for innovation. That's a shame. I'll keep looking. Hmm. Where am I going to find a tambourine? Or how am I going to make one? Could I make one? I don't even have string. No, there's no way. Wait a minute. Percussion. A tambourine is percussion. Hold on. Hold on just a second. I'm going out of game. I need to look up a picture of a tambourine so I know what it is. It's a type of drum? I guess I have them mixed up. Tambourine. Oh, that's what a tambourine is! Okay. See, I was thinking something completely different. Okay, that explains what the bottle caps are for. They're for the tambourine. The tambourine is the thing that goes k -ch -k. Yeah, that that noise. I can't really make it with my mouth. Um, do I have enough? Don't I need more bottle caps? I'd probably use this basket to make it. There, I've got a homemade tambourine. I just need something to stick the caps onto the basket with. Bingo! I would have thought you'd needed more. But, okay. And plus, they need to be able to jingle, or else the bottle caps won't make any noise. They'll just be sharp and cut your hands when you hit it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, something to join it. Like the three nails for the three bottle caps. And there, my tambourine is finished. Yeah, for some reason, I thought a tambourine was some sort of a... Like, mandolin type thing. So when he said percussion, I was thinking, what? Percussion. I'm glad I looked up a picture, because otherwise I would have been lost. Um, okay. Yeah, they should be good to go. Wonderful, fat-coated, crappy string and a terrible tambourine. Here, I made you a tambourine. Hey, this should work great. Thanks a lot. So you guys are all set to play now? Yep, we'll head in and sound check if the owner says it's okay. Sure is, we sorted out her complications. Great, just give Audrey ten minutes to restring her bass and we'll head back in. Alright, I'll go and let Kim know. Thanks for the help, by the way. My pleasure. I just wish I could stay around for the show, but I really need to get back to the station. Aw, oh, that sucks. We'll make sure we play here again soon. You can catch us then. Great. See you later, guys. I fixed up Audrey and Rasputin Kim, and they're all good to play. Aw, thanks, Ellie. You're such a sweetheart. I'd be lost without your help. Are you looking forward to the show? I wish I could stay. All this delay means that they're coming on stage too late. I really need to head back to the station to prepare for the late shift. Aw, oh, I was really looking forward again to hanging out with you tonight. I know, I'm sorry. Hey, I'm not doing any shows tomorrow night. How about I come around then? We can catch up properly then. You promise? I promise, Kim. It'll be great. Okay, Ellie. I look forward to it. Have a great night, sweetie. Thanks, Kim. You too. Hey, Zach. How was the show? 
Yeah, good. I'm more excited about the new tracks I'll be playing tomorrow, but it was fun to go over some older stuff as well. How was the gig? They hadn't started playing when I left. Uh, there were some dramas, but we managed to sort them out. That's a shame. Oh, hey, someone dropped this off for you while you were out. A letter for me? Strange that they drop it off in person rather than send it in the mail. I know. I don't know who it was. I was doing the show when I heard knocking on the door. I went up there during a song, and this was sitting outside the door. I wonder what it says. Let's see. Dear Miss Major, I am writing to inform you that the building you have negotiated lease for has been bought from the party you leased it off, and we no longer hold the title for this land. We have arranged contractors to demolish the site within one month of the day of the sale, which was yesterday. Son of a bitch! Please make sure you have vacated the premise, premises by this date. Sincerely, Trent Harold Terreri, uh, Terria Settlements. God damn it. Zach, this letter. They're going to demolish the station. Oh, that's right. I think it's part of a series. Uh, in the law, one was written, designed, drawn, and coded by Ben Chandler with the help of the following people. Okay, so yeah, it's apparently part of a series, and I'm pretty sure that no future installments have come. So unfortunately, I will not see the end of this story anytime very soon, probably. I really hope it gets continued, though, because this was so good. I want to know what happens. Ah, <sighs> God, it was so good. I really like the theme of it, of you running a radio station, and the fact that you actually hear the radio station is just really cool. And of course, as always, being a Ben Chandler game, the art was incredible, the writing was great, really interesting characters. Just, there was something really charming and comfortable about playing the game, like, it, it was really relaxing. Uh, aside from the time I got stuck, which was the only negative of the game. It's got a little bit of adventure game puzzle silliness, but it wasn't big. And aside from that section, the whole game was just really fun and relaxing to play. It feels like the sort of thing where... It's... It's the sort of game, and you see this in movies and TV shows too, where everything is always okay. Obviously there's conflicts to resolve, but... Like, everything is on an upbeat, positive note. And you feel like everything can be solved, and it just had that feeling about it. You know, you're part of this small town with these cool people, and you know everyone around, and everyone's friends, and you're solving problems. It's just a really fun and happy game. So even though they do have conflicts, and obviously their building might be demolished, but, I mean, come on, with the type of game it is, they're gonna get through that problem. Right? It's, it's pretty obvious. So yeah, it's a really good game, and... One of the most uplifting games I've played recently. I typically like really dark stuff, but it's nice to have something that's different. So there you go, that was Airwave, I Fought the Law, and The Law won. I hope you enjoyed. What is this? Hey Zach, I thought I'd find you here. Oh hey Kim, what's going on? I just shut the bar for the night. Where's Elodie? She's doing her late night show. You know how it is with her. Of course, I should have known. I finally told her, Zack. Oh, really? You told her how you feel about her? Yeah, it only took me, like, 
forever. What did she say? Oh, well, she said she's pretty busy and stuff. I don't know, she didn't really give me a proper answer. She's a tough one, Kim. Used to doing things by herself. I think the idea of relying on anyone for anything personal, or being in a relationship of any kind, kind of scares her. I guess you're right. She is a bit of a lone star at times. Remember when Mr. Graham yelled at us for being noisy outside his house when we were kids? <laughs> yeah. We were so scared, and she stood right up to him. The poor old fella probably didn't know what hit him. There's no denying she's always been tough. You're right. Just give her some time, Kim. She probably just needs a while to think about it. I hope so, Zack. Hey, Kim. Elodie got a letter saying they're going to demolish the station. Really? Yeah, just before she went on the air. Oh, wow. That's terrible news. Yeah, I'd be lost if we didn't have the station anymore. Hey, Kim. Yeah? Do you think the station will really get knocked down? If Elodie gets a say in the matter? No way in hell. Exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> and that's the end of the game. That was a perfect ending. Okay, that, that wraps it up pretty well, actually. But I, I think it is planned to be a series, so we'll see if there's more. But even if there is no more, I, I feel like that's a good ending. I feel satisfied with that. So again, hope you enjoyed my playthrough of Airwave.